So this is part three of my little series on uh, OpenTX programming for helicopters. Uh, the first part dealt with uh, distinguishing between different types of helicopters from the point of view of transmitter control, and the second part dealt with programming the most common type of helicopters uh, these days, that is helicopters with inter fly barless helicopters with internal flight controllers uh, that give direct, uh, but still giving direct control over pitch from the transmitter. Um, this third part deals with uh, programming of a, a small subtype of helicopters, essentially helicopters, fly barless helicopters with internal flight controllers, which don't give you control over uh, pitch from the transmitter. Uh, and that would basically really be WL Toys helicopters. I'm not personally aware of any others that are like this, though there may be others. So um, here we've got the, um, the, the WL Toys V977, the WL Toys V950, and this is WL Toys V930, which is actually a fixed pitch helicopter. So it doesn't have pitch anyway, but essentially almost, well, pretty much exactly the same program will fly it. Although, of course, you won't get idle up mode because it's not a, um, a collective pitch helicopter. So let's look at the programming. Now the programming for these helicopters is, is the simplest of all, simply because everything's pretty much done by the flight controller, you just have to set channels up to give the appropriate commands to the flight controller. Um, uh, I've set, uh, the particular example I'm looking at here was set up to, to use the for the V977, and I was flying the V977 with it, I've got a five minute timer on it, and that's uh, contingent on logical switch 1, logical switch 1 is an A is greater than X condition on channel 3 throttle greater than minus 80. So that means that the timer will be on whenever the output throttle is above minus 80. Um, about, about the only other thing I've changed on the main setup page is I've switched my uh, SF warning so that SF warns when it is forward rather than back because I, I like to use SF towards the back of the transmitter for throttle active and away from the back of the transmitter for throttle hold so I can flick it off easily. Um, I'm using a jumper T16 so to, for control I'm using the internal multi-protocol module. Uh, the uh, appropriate protocol for these trans these helicopters, the WL Toys 977, 930, and 950, is, the, is KN with the subtype WL Toys. And this does work, I am flying them with it. Again, because these have an internal flight controller, we're not doing any CCMP mixing, so we don't need anything on the Halley page. In the case of these helicopters, we don't really need flight modes. There's no point having flight modes because we can't do anything useful with flight modes in the transmitter, really. They're all just programmed in. There are only two flight modes, basically, normal and idle up, and they're programmed into the um, into the onboard flight controller. So as I say, this is the simplest of all because we're, not, we're just not doing very much with it. Um, and I see I actually have a mistake here. I've got Expo on my rudder and not on my elevator, which is clearly not what I intended. Um, whoops. Thank you. What I intended was to have Expo on the aileron and the elevator, but not on the rudder. Um, you really don't want to program much because um, most of it's done for you in the flight controller. You can put some expo on the control if you want, but you've got to remember that anything you put on the controls here is going to be added onto what they've already coded in the uh, in the um, flight in the flight in the onboard flight uh, controller. So you've got to be a little bit careful about putting too much in. So we've got aileron on one, elevator on two, throttle on three, rudder on four. And then we've got four more channels, and all these channels are basically just emulating switches on the WL Toys own controller and controlling things in the flight, the onboard flight um, controller. Uh, channel five is corresponds to the rate switch on the um, on the, uh, uh, the WL Toys own controller. It switches between between high and low rates. Again, we're not setting the rate here. The rate is programmed into the controller. We're just telling it. Um, we've, we've got it on switch D. Uh, so if we look what we're saying for switch D here, 
we're basically just saying it goes into high rates when you go up to 100, basically. If you send minus 100 or 0, you're in low rates. If you send 100, you're in high rates. Um, channel 6 is an arming channel on the... I mean, I'm, I'm going to put these out on the, on the same channels that I'm naming them for here. So I'm putting... Uh, Channel 6 is an arming channel, which is essentially a built-in throttle uh, hold. Um, so if we look at this, if we, if we emulate for a bit, uh, if I have switch F back, I'm sending 100% on channel six, and if you send a hundred percent on channel six to this to these helicopters, they will not fly. The throttle will not go up. Now you can't tell that from here. It looks here as if the throttle is going up because the, you can send the throttle up from the um, from the transmitter. We're not cutting the throttle in the transmitter, but that will cut the throttle on the helicopter. You, you can try it. I assure you, it will. You send a hundred percent on channel six, and no matter what you send on channel three for the throttle, you can send a hundred percent on channel three for the throttle, but it, but the the rotors won't turn because the, when you send a hundred percent on channel six, the helicopter will be disarmed. So we're using the built-in disarm on the helicopter to disarm it rather than a throttle cut in the transmitter. You can program a throttle cut in the transmitter as well if you want to, and I wouldn't blame you for doing that, though I don't in fact have one coded here, I see. Somewhat unusually for me, I tend to be a bit of a belt and braces person, so I'm almost surprised I didn't code one, but I know that this, this, arm, this disarm via channel 6 does work. Channel 7 is a mode channel, which is on switch E. And channel 8 is a stabilization channel, which is on, which I'm putting on switch A. Channel 8 is equivalent to the switch on, um, on the WL Toys own transmitter that switches 6G stabilization on and off. So you'll see for switch A, I'm saying stabilization on when it's in the back position at, or the middle position and stabilization off when it's in the forward position. Um, uh, well, actually, this, well, yes, you can sort of see what we're doing here. So, so that's the back position. This is the forward position. So in the forward position, we send 100% on channel 8. And when we send 100% on channel 8, that will turn off. When we send 100% on channel 8, that will turn off the 6G stabilization. Channel 7 is the mode, I beg your pardon, and where are we? Yes, so switchy, I'm say it's, I'm giving normal mode for the back two positions. Now, for idle up, I'm using a logical switch, and the reason I'm using a logical switch is that logical switch is conditional on switch A being back and switch E being back. And if we see what that means, switch A being back and switch E being back. And when switch A is back, that gives us 100% on channel 8, which turns off the 6G stabilization. And when switch E is all the way back, that gives us 100% on channel 7, which turns on idle up mode. You have to have both on. If you, if you send 100% on channel 7 to turn on idle up mode, it will not turn on if you still have 6G stabilization turned on, which is turned on and off via channel 8. So to get into idle up mode, you must send 100% on both channel 7 and channel 8. If these are both on 100%, and of course, channel 6 has to not be at 100%, because if channel 6 is at 100%, you're disarmed. Mm. Which would be probably a good, another good thing to add, really. Um, uh, where is that? Uh, the disarm. We're armed when switch F is back. So really we should have switch F back in there as well. Because to get into idle up mode we must have channel 7-8 at 100% and channel 
um, six not at a hundred percent. I hope this is clear. I'm sorry if I'm mumbling it a bit, but um, channel six has to not be at a hundred percent because if channel six is at a hundred percent, you can't get the motor to turn at all. Channel 8 has to be at 100% to turn off 6G stabilization mode, and channel 7 has to be at 100% to say you want idle up mode. If all those conditions are met, then you will be in idle up mode, and we'll say idle up and the motor will turn. Um, okay, I am passing all of my outputs to my inputs, so the, the, the basically, well, I'm passing the, I'm, all of the things I've got defined here in the mixes. Uh, you can see how in the outputs I've named the channels. Uh, this is where you put the channel name in, of course. The channel name appears here, but you don't put it in here. If you put a name in here, it will appear over on this side. These names that appear next to the channels come from the output page. And the channels are indeed aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, rate, arm, mode, and stabilization. The, the channels 1 and 4, the aileron and rudder, have to be inverted. You have to be reverse the direction of them. We do not use any curves whatsoever for these WL Toys helicopters because they don't. it's not useful to cur put curves in. You can't put a pitch curve in because you have no control over the pitch. You could put a throttle curve in, but it's not a particularly good idea because they've already got throttle curves hard-coded into the onboard flight controller. So if you put a curve in, you're superimposing your curve on theirs, and that can produce some pretty strange results. So I would suggest you don't put curves in unless you're really unhappy with the way the throttle's going. Um, I've only got two logical switches at the moment, one to, to switch on the timer and one basically to, to play a sound telling me I'm in idle up mode. Uh, so... Um, we're playing arm disarm, we're playing low rate, high rate, and we're using the built-in rates, not programming our own rates. We're playing normal mode, or idle up, um, and we're playing stabilization on or stabilization off. These are all just sounds that are telling us what the switches are doing. So we're, if we cannot, if we don't quite remember what we program the switches to do when we flick them, we'll hear the sound telling us what they do. The only other thing I've got is switch H is resetting timer 1, and that's turned on, else if you don't click this on, if you don't click on there, then the line does nothing. I've never understood why that's there. Why would you want a line that does nothing? But I must be missing something. But I do know that you have to turn it on to get it to work. Um, that's just basically so you can put another battery in the helicopter and then, you know, flip the momentary switch back to reset the timer. And that's basically it for these helicopters simulating them really doesn't achieve all that much well I mean it shows you what you're sending from the transmitter but it doesn't simulate how the helicopter's behaving because most of the behavior of the helicopter like you know going into idle up mode uh, is controlled by the onboard flight controller so you can't really see it very much from here um, but uh, I have used the, the, the jumper T16 with this kind of programming I did make a couple of minor changes here to clarify things but um, basically I've flown my uh, helicopters with this you can use exactly the same program to fly the V930 which is a fixed pitch helicopter um, it just it just doesn't have an idle up mode because it's a fixed pitch helicopter and I'm not sure whether the stabilization switch actually turns stabilization off on the V930. You can certainly fly the V930 with this program because I have done. Basically I've just copied the same program and flown the V930 with it and it does indeed work but obviously because it's a fixed pitch helicopter um, it's not going to do all the same things. Um, I'm not, as I say, I'm not 100% sure. The, I think the transmitter that comes with the V930, I don't think, as per the manual, actually has any way to turn the stabilization off. And I'm not sure whether uh, sending 100% on channel 8 actually does turn the stabilization off on the 930. Oh, one other function that is defined in the um, manuals for these is the hover debugging. Uh, I have not made any attempt to implement that here. Uh, I don't quite understand how it works from the transmitter anyway, and in any case you don't really need it if you're using a programmable transmitter, because the point of the hover debugging basically is that it essentially stores trims in the onboard flight controller. That's basically what the hover debugging feature does in, in these helicopters. You set up a trims on, you do a trim flight and set up trims on the transmitter, and then when you land it and press 
the hover debugging key on WL Toys Transmitter again. That stores those trims in the the flight controller. So when you if you fly the helicopter in future with you, your transmitter trim set to zero, you're still getting those same actual trims on the helicopter. I suspect it probably uses um, channel nine because that's the next available channel to in some way to control that. Mm, but I well I really don't know quite how it does it. Uh, maybe sending some value on. I, I'm speculating, really. Uh, I don't know, and I'm not try. I haven't tried to implement it here. Um, so, but this is, I believe, I think we've covered everything here. It's really not a lot with several pages you don't use at all. Don't forget to reverse one and four, and that's basically it, really. Uh, that should give you everything you need to control the V977 and the V950 and more than you need to control the V930. Again, of course, if I've not been clear about anything and you have any questions, do ask in the comments and I'll do my best to clarify, to respond as best as I'm able.